You ever look at those big houses and think to yourself, what do these people do for money? So in this video, I will show you what 90% of millionaires do that contributed to their financial success. Stick around to the end so you can see the best option that not only puts money in your pocket right now, but also sets you up for a beautiful retirement. Oh wait, sorry. That was retirement with only one source of income. Now we talking. Keep it locked, it's Crystal with the Cash Compass. So welcome or welcome back. I am here to teach you the financial lessons that you should have been taught in school, but for some reason, they forgot. Be sure to like and subscribe because we talk about everything from personal finance to investing to economics, and the best part is I get straight into it. So how would you build crazy amounts of wealth? The stock market? Possibly, but it might take a while, and if you want to actually have access to your gains, there are some taxes that you will have to pay that ain't so pretty. Alternatively, you can invest in real estate. And what's unique about real estate is that it just has so many different ways to invest. You can put as much control or as little control as you want to, as much money or as little money as you want to. The choice is yours. And you don't have to even own a home if that's not your thing. So let's get started with REITs. So for those who don't know, I am the senior of financial reporting at a real estate investment trust. So I know what I am talking about. You can trust me, but you do have to do your own research. REITs are basically stocks, but they pay dividends. What's unique about a REIT is that they have to give 90% of their income to shareholders. That's you. Think about it this way. When you buy one of these REIT stocks, you're pretty much getting a share of the company. That's what they call them, shares, right? So you get your share of the company based on how much money you've invested. They pay out what we call dividends, and that can be either monthly or quarterly. It just depends on which REIT you invest in. So what REITs do is they do all the work for you. You give them your money. They choose what assets they want to purchase. It can be commercial properties. It can be multifamily properties, which is basically residential apartments. If you live in one, that's an investment. They can also give out loans. I mean, it's literally pretty much anything that you can do with real estate, these REITs can do. Because they have to pay out 90% of their income, you normally get a pretty decent return, anywhere from eight to 10% or even more. Try getting that in your savings. You can get REITs as low as $25 a share. You can Google REITs and see which ones might be better for you. You can review their balance sheet, which I can get into in a whole separate video. But the point is get in there, invest and collect your dividends while you sit back and relax. Now, the one downside with REITs that you don't get the same exact tax advantages as what I'm gonna mention later in the video, which is why this is a good option but stick around for an even better option. Now the next type of investing is called crowdfunding. You would invest small portions of money relative to what you would have to pay for let's say your own home and it goes into a real estate project or a portfolio. So it ends up being a whole pool of investors. Kind of like how you guys all come together and like and comment on my video if you haven't done so already because you know that you're getting a good return on your investment. Like paper assets, which are stocks and bonds, crowdfunding allows you to invest either by debt or equity. What are you talking about, Crystal? All right, all right. When you're investing in a real estate project or portfolio's equity, it's kind of like the REIT where you have a share of that company. So if they were to sell an asset, you should be able to get some of that money back to you. The money that you're getting paid back comes from the rental income or any other income that the portfolio generates, which like I said, if, you're, if they sell a property, you should be getting that income as well. Conversely, with debt crowdfunding, you get your income in the form of interest or the mortgage payment. So this is different because you don't actually own a share of the company. If they were to sell one of their real estate buildings, you wouldn't really get anything from that. Now there are plenty of different crowdfunding options that you have. Again, if you go to Google, search crowdfunding, you'll get a whole bunch of different options. Let me know if that's something that you would be interested in me making a video on, what I think about the different crowdfunding um, websites. The downfall with crowdfunding is there are fees you have to read. I know you guys don't like reading, I know it, but it's okay. You must because if you're putting your money in these things, you better know what's going on in there, okay? Another thing is they do keep your coin for a very long time. It can range from two to 10 years. So make sure that you're okay with having your money locked up for that long a period of a time. For that long of a period. You know what I mean. The next, which is my absolute favorite drum roll, is a multifamily properties. So with this, there is so much benefits that you can get 
the one downfall is it's a lot more startup capital that you need whereas you can get into a REIT with $25 you can get into crowdfunding with maybe a couple hundred with multi-family properties you will have to put a pretty penny down okay but the money you get back would make it all worth it plus you have full control over this asset so if you want to sell it you can if you don't want to sell it if you want to rent it out long term short term baby it's all up to you also in some cases depending on where you live and what their options are you can get into a a home without any down payment there are plenty of down payment assistance programs personally I live in Florida and I've seen up to ten or fifteen thousand dollars worth of money that they give you to get into your home and a lot of times you don't got to pay that money back it does depend on your income so definitely check with your estate you can just google down payment assistance programs and there you go but what I love so much about this method is that there's so many options that you can do so if you want to be super conservative, you're not really entirely sure about this whole real estate thing and you saw what happened in 2008, maybe you're a little bit nervous, that's cool, totally get it. What you can do is what we call house hacking. And that is the concept of buying a duplex, living in one side, and renting out the other. Now the way this works is obviously you need to make sure you can make the payment even if you didn't have that other side rented out. But you have very low risk because you live there. And no matter where you go, you'll have to be making a rental payment, right? Unless you live with your parents, of course. My family go give me a part of this. It's good. Mama, I love you. P.O.P. Holy die. But you get that property, you live in one side, you rent the other side out, and if you do this the right way, you might not end up paying anything. Now, true story, a couple months ago, I put an offer in for a home that was beautiful. It was actually, for the most part, pretty much ready to go. And literally the other side was already paying rent, it was already rented, and that rent was my whole entire mortgage payment plus I got $100. Do you want to get paid to live somewhere? I'll show you guys pictures of the house. It's beautiful, gorgeous. I didn't get it. Life moves on. I'm still looking though. And I will have a whole bunch of content coming on about real estate from short term and long term rentals. I have a lot of content coming up so please make sure you're subscribed so you can see that. So speaking of long term and short term, Depending on what you want to do, you can have a long-term rental, which is somebody who would be signing maybe an annual lease or a month-to-month -month lease, or you can do short-term rentals, which we most commonly know as Airbnb, those temporary people not really here for long. You get more money with short-term rentals, but it's also more turnover and more expenses too. If you don't even want to have that much involvement, you can hire a property manager. I've seen them from anywhere from 7 to 10% of that monthly income. So it's something you can think about and factor in when you are looking for properties. This is awesome because if you can get a down payment assistance program coupled with getting a duplex and having that other side rented out, I mean, you'll pretty much get in there with not much skin in the game and your returns can be insane. Now, this method has the most tax advantages because you have depreciation, that you could take off interest on the loan your taxes your insurance your maintenance i mean you can write everything off another option is if you have a single family home let's say you don't really want a duplex you can airbnb a couple rooms in the house or you can have a roommate right so now your roommate's helping you pay off your loan you're paying down the mortgage they're helping you to the mortgage as well and you should get some equity in there as long as we are in an appreciating market i know i said a mouthful so if you guys want me to expand on any of that let me know in the comments the final method is what we call wholesaling and that is the concept of taking a contract and flipping it you know i don't remember back in like 2013 everybody was talking about flipping 50 into 100 this is a real life way to flip the money okay now this method would require you to be a networker you have to be a go-getter for this because you're gonna purchase a house and when you get that house under contract which means they've accepted your offer you will see a section within that contract that discusses wholesaling so in this case you want to have the option to be able to transfer this contract off to somebody else you will find these properties under value so let's say if a house has some cosmetic things that it needs done, some carpeting, some new paint, something like this, right? Most people want move-in ready, so they're, they're going to probably pass it up. But you, you see that potential. Potential, is that you, player? And what you're going to do is you'll buy it for, let's say, $100,000. It's really worth one fifty, dollars right? You'll sell it to somebody else for $110,000. So that $10,000 difference is yours. 
a lot of people have had so much success on this um i will put a link down below about wholesaling from a website called bigger pockets which is where i get so much great information so definitely check it out if you're interested and it'll let you know more about the wholesaling process all right let's recap we have gone over four types of real estate investment strategies that can appeal to small or a large budget little to a lot of control i mean you have so much options it's crazy Rewatch this if you have to and dig deeper and do your own research if need be. Don't just listen to a random girl on YouTube. I do know my stuff, but do your own due diligence. All right, yes, I'm getting fancy. Do you like it? Go ahead and watch those videos. My Instagram is down below. You can go ahead and follow that and make sure you subscribe. Duh.